Hey guys, welcome back to another Mishmas video. We are gonna be playing with the Scott Barnes Color Bomb eyeshadow palette along with his uh, Pro brush set. I did a whole video talking about uh, four out of his five new palettes, the Snatural eyeshadow palette, the blush, the contour, the highlight palette, and I just fell in love. I love all of those palettes. They work beautifully. I can't put them down. I feel like I'm neglecting all of my other makeup at this point. Anyway, by the end of that video, I was like, I am ordering that Colorbomb palette. I am ordering his brush set. I was like, let's let's do this. Like, let's get let's get into Scott Barnes. But you know, I published that video, and Scott Barnes actually reached out to me, and uh, he thanked me for the video. He actually sent me a voice message. I was so touched, I was almost in tears. Like, here's this makeup artist that is like currently working on J Lo's makeup, like currently working on J Lo's makeup, and took the time out to thank me me for making a video on his amazing product. I was like, wow, thank you so, so much. So anyway, long story short, he sent me the Color Bomb palette and his Pro Brush set. I was like, oh my God, thank you so much. So that's what we're gonna be playing with today. Um, his Pro Brush set is very large, so I don't know if we'll be able to use all of them. Um, I will definitely continue to use them and get back to you guys. I know you guys were very, very curious about his brush set like even before all of his new palettes came out you guys were asking me about his brushes and i was like whoa like i have so many i need to like calm down a little bit but many of you have been pressing me <laughs> to get his brush set to play with them or whatever so that's what we're going to do today and that's what i'll continue to do of course i will report back so anyway let's get into these scott barnes brushes um i have a bare face i'm on the scott barnes site now because i want to look up um these brushes because I noticed that these brushes they just have like a number there and then there is like a code here but there's no sometimes there's like a description underneath but there's no description so I just want to see like what his thoughts were on these brushes and how he would use them um so let me just get down here pro brushes all right so let's see oh awesome so there is a foundation brush that is number 42. So let's go ahead and start there. Oh, this looks like um, like a duo fiber style type of brush. All of his brushes are synthetic and they're incredibly soft. Let me see what um, the description is. So this number 68 brush was designed to have straight and wavy fibers at a longer length to pick up and apply any type of foundation, powder, cream, or liquid. Works with concealers. My first observation, by the way, before we get into the actual application, is this brush is incredibly, incredibly weighty. Oh, it's an all wood handle, synthetic fibers, aluminum, uh, ferrule, no shedding, does not change shape. Um, so that would explain like the weight of this handle. It's very, very heavy. All right, so I'm gonna apply my Sisley Tinted Sunscreen Cream. I have it in One Natural, and I'm choosing this one because I find this cream to work with brushes, fingers, sponge, everything that I've tried so far. So I feel like it's one of those good test products. So we'll see, let me just apply some to my face here and I don't usually use foundation brushes with such long uh, bristles foundation brushes that I use generally are much uh, denser and shorter so this will be interesting for me to play with and this tinted sunscreen cream is uh, on the thicker side it's like it doesn't have any kind of like running to it at all So you know what I realize is helping? Um, so like I just mentioned, I usually use like denser, shorter bristled um, foundation brushes, and this one has longer hairs, um, that if I use longer strokes, it's much better. Like with the denser brushes, I can kind of do this. But with this brush, I find like longer brush strokes to be more effective than, than this, at least with a cream product. All right, well, the application is very smooth, very, very even. I don't think it took much effort. I think it's really nice. I was a little bit skeptical because again, I'm not used to this kind of shape foundation brush, but I think with those longer brush strokes, it really, it really helped, you know, it really helped the application. So since this 68 brush is like a really good all around brush and even mentioned you could use it with concealer, I'm gonna go ahead and do that um, because I'm scrolling through the other brushes here and I don't see one like specifically for a concealer. I mean, obviously you can do whatever you want, but uh, I was just looking just to see if there was something. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this uh, number 68 brush and use it for this concealer. This is the Estee Lauder uh, Double Wear Radiant Concealer. I have it in the shade 1C, light cool. And just going to brush across. 
Oh, nice. Wow, that was pretty effortless. Again, I'm using much longer strokes than I normally would with like a concealer brush, one that's smaller and denser. I usually kind of sit there and like really work it in. But with this brush, I feel like really sweeping it across makes it really effective. Okay, next we have the number 67 brush. This is the Good Face brush. This is gigantic. This is much bigger than I thought it was, at least looking at it in the picture here online. Ooh, this looks like a very nice powder brush. Very, very soft. Let me just see what the website says. This is a powder powerhouse. Great for the face, neckline, jawline, chest, and shoulders. Uh, Scott frequently uses this brush to cover large areas quickly and also to stack layers of makeup below the face. With the longer bristles than your average powder brush, the 67 is great for when you want a large brush you can use to apply a little pressure to without it losing its shape. It's floppy, but there's still a little bit of like... Uh, resiliency, you know, there's a lot of synthetic fibers that I feel like are just floppy and they're just floppy. Like they don't really do anything. So this, this feels nice. This feels like it has a little bit of something there. All right, I've got my trusty Kogendo natural lighting powder. Okay, so I'm just pouncing the powder on first. With a little bit of extra powder on the brush, I'm going to sweep. This brush is really heavy. <laughs> you know, this brush is so big, it's um, really on the heavy side, especially out of all the brushes that I have. So this is probably the heaviest powder brush that I have. And I feel like sometimes with powder brushes, I like to pounce like this. This is almost too heavy for that. This is definitely better for like buffing, I think. For pouncing, for me personally, it's just like a little too heavy. I feel like I'm kind of hitting myself in the face. All right, again, a really nice application. And I don't feel like it picked up my foundation underneath, which is great. Oh, there's a powder sheer brush. That's number 66. I'm not the biggest fan of fan brushes, no pun intended. Um, I love the Sonia G fan brushes because they're so uh, thick that they're almost not like fan brushes, they're almost just like smushed brushes. This one, this one is a little bit, this one's a little bit light, but I would like to give it a shot. And then there's also the Flawless Face Brush, the number 65 brush. I'm very, very intrigued by this. This is another fan-shaped brush, but this looks uh, thicker, it looks denser, but let's take a close look here. Ooh, yeah, I think I'm gonna like this fan brush. So it's really dense and then the hairs are short, so you can really like work product in. Ooh, I like this one. So this is number 65, this one's number 66. Here they are as a comparison. So this one is named as a powder sheer, so this is definitely gonna give you a very kind of like light coverage. Maybe I'll use this for highlighter, although there is a highlighter brush. So yes, this will like apply powder products in a very uh, lighter way than, than say something like this. But it also mentions that if you have um, sensitive skin that you'll probably like something like this because it has such a light touch, which it really does. Oh, it feels really nice on the skin. So I've got my Scott Barnes sculpting palette. I'm gonna try this 66 brush uh, on one side of my face, and then maybe we'll play around with uh, one of the other ones. I'm gonna go into Carve and Frame, this one next to it. I'm gonna go between these two. Ooh. You know, this brush is a great pairing for his products because they are so heavily pigmented. And if you are a little bit intimidated by that, especially if you're not used to contouring or whatever, this is a great brush for that because of its uh, light application. But I'm not sure that I personally like this brush for contouring. Definitely put down the product really nicely. It almost like blended itself. I think I'm just gonna have to keep playing with this brush, you know, and like figure out how best it works for me. So that is the 66 Powder Sheer Pro Brush. And I really wanna try this number 65 brush, which is called the Flawless Face Pro Brush. And let's see what they have to say about this. So Scott refers to this brush as the one you can't live without. So I am very, very excited to try this. I'm gonna go into Carve and then dip into frame a little bit. And let's try it on this side. Ooh, ooh, okay. Very like heavy application there. Let's see how nicely it buffs it out. Let me knock some off. <laughs> oh, I'm on my hand here. Wow, 
blended that out like a dream. Okay. Yeah, look how much softer this application is. It almost looks like it's, you know, just kind of like airbrushed around. And this is like, like really, really intense kind of application right there. Okay, I'm gonna go back to this brush and like soften up the edges here a little bit. I think I just kind of like laying it down with this and then buffing it out with this brush. We'll see. Again, I'm gonna keep using these brushes and then kind of give you my final thoughts on them probably in a couple weeks or so. This contour is like magic though. I just love it. Ooh, you know what? I'm gonna use this hashtag shade color with this uh, number 65 brush and contour out my jawline. Ooh, it's great for this. Great for the jawline. Okay, now I've got the Scott Barnes blush palette out. Um, and I have one more face brush to use and that's the number 64, the highlighter. That's this guy. I think, I mean, I think you can use this for blush or highlight, but it does have that nice kind of point to it that a lot of highlighting brushes have. Let's see what they say about this brush on the site. Dream blush highlighter contour application, taper tip. Scott's go-to for powder as well for the under and inner eye area. All right, so I use these two fun colors uh, in my previous Scott Burns video. So I think I'm gonna use this Strike a Rose color. Let's see how that looks. Ooh, okay, picks up a lot of product. Tap that off. Oh, really buffs in the blush nicely too. It's like this skinny um, version of the Sonia G Inochige Pro brush. But yeah, you can see like the hair lengths are about the same, but the Sonia G's is just fatter, a little bit more egg shaped. And now for highlight, of course I have the Scott Barnes highlighter palette. And in my previous video, I used these three highlights together. And I really liked that. I think what I'm gonna do though is use this one instead of this one. It's a little bit peachier. Uh, and mix it with these two as well. All right, I just did a quick like spot cleaning of this number 65 brush because I wanna use this to buff out the highlighter. Oh, nice. Oh yeah, this is a great buffing brush. Ooh, God, that highlight is really beautiful. Really, really beautiful. All right, and now let's move on to eyes. So I've got the Color Bomb palette here, and I, you know, didn't order this initially because I just thought, oh, you know, I'm not gonna really use it. It has such bright colors. Um, I'm not even sure how much I like the Scott Barnes products yet. Let me not go overboard. Let me just get four out of the five palettes. I don't know why I didn't even just bother getting this one. But what I wanna show you is, well, here's the packaging. So we've got this outer sleeve, which is really fun. And then here are all of the ingredients there and a picture of the palette. And what I wanted to mention, oh, and then here's the palette. Looks just like this natural one. But what I wanted to mention is that there's actually a lot of nice neutral colors in here. Like these two columns, beautiful, soft, natural colors. This gold, personally, I kind of consider as a neutral like these two shades down here. It's really just the super bright colors in here that I think, you know, your eye is drawn to. And I know personally I was like, oh, you know, wow, that's, it's just too bright for me. But there really are a lot of like everyday office appropriate wearable kind of eyeshadows in here. I am very, very drawn to these two columns right here. They're gorgeous. But I promise you, because this is the Color Bomb palette, I really want to try some of these brighter shades. I am, of course, very drawn to Shameless. So let me go ahead and show you some swatches of this palette. And I think I'm going to go like up and down, left to right. I feel like that makes a little bit more sense how this one is laid out. So let's go ahead and start with this Vibes color. So that is a matte yellow. And then we have Paparazzi, Secret Service, Koi, First Class, Mediterranean, Riviera, Peacock, New Fling, Shameless, Royalty, Arm Candy, Promiscuous, Sassy, Tease, Pin Up, Glam Rock, Old Money, Feisty, and silk sheets. 
these shades swatch so incredibly. I cannot wait to get these on the eyes. You guys know how much I like this natural palette. This natural palette has a lot of different finishes. Of course, the color scheme of it is uh, much safer, if you will. But what is great about this color bomb palette is it's not just colorful but I feel like there are some different formulas in here like the secret service is one of those like matte shades with micro glitters in there this glam rock and this silk sheets really kind of feel like um, toppers so overall I think this palette is not just more different from this natural just because of the color story, but also because of all the different kind of like textures and finishes as well. And I have all the eye brushes here. Let's see, let's start out with the number 62 brush, which is the eye blender brush. So here's the eye blender brush. It has um, a nice point to it. The bristles are really, really soft. Here's my Isom S33 brush that I love. So you can see that the hairs are longer and that it's pointier at the top. And if you guys have watched any of my videos when I'm applying eyeshadow or talked about brushes at all, um, I'm generally not the biggest fan of pointy blender brushes. Um, I really like ones that are rounded, which is why I love this S33 so much, but I'll give this a shot. So because this palette is so fun, um, there are no like matte transition shade, typical matte transition shades or you know matte kind of like brow bone highlight or anything like that but i do wonder if these shades can kind of be mixed all right maybe a little bit so what i'm going to do actually i'm going to mix shameless and vibes together these two matte shades together and see if i can get something in between which would be kind of like an orange a peachy shade let's see how that works Not bad, I actually kind of like that. Blending out nicely, this brush is working beautifully. Generally, full disclosure, I am not the biggest fan of synthetic brushes when it comes to eye brushes especially. Face brushes, I actually, I, I have plenty of favorites that are not natural hair, but when it comes to eye brushes, I don't know, I just have a harder time finding brushes that I really like. But so far, this one is working really nicely. It's not doing what synthetic brushes generally do to me that I can't stand, and that's that kind of like, plop and then you have to like just spend the rest of your time blending it out this seems to have like deposited the pigment like evenly it didn't just like plop it down and i'm just kind of like spreading it out so yeah so far i'm really really liking this nice okay all right where do we go from here okay i'm very intrigued by this number 63 brush it's called the eye winger and it looks like a teeny tiny version of that powder sheer brush. Yeah, it's like a mini version of that. How cool. Okay, I've never ever used an eye brush like this. So let's take a look at what it says on the site here. The 63 brush with a never before seen design smoky wing, patent pending, is an eye blender, but with a one of a kind ergonomic winged design allowing for precision finger rolling of the brush through the eyelid with an anchored wrist. I wonder, I mean like, like this? Okay, maybe maybe I'll use this later. Let's see, what other eye brushes do we have here? And this is like a small version of the 65. All right, I'm really intrigued by this one. So I think I'm gonna go with this number 61 eye fan brush. And let's see, what should I use? I think I wanna use I just want to use this shameless color. Okay, I feel really stuck, so I'm actually gonna go on to, oh look, Morgan Turner just, just posted a video, Scott Barnes' entire palette collection review and demo. Let me see. Hi guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. Sorry, Morgan. <laughs> Her look looks very colorful, but I think she used this natural palette. Okay, um, I'm looking at the Scott Barnes TV YouTube uh, video for the Color Bomb palette and it has you know, the girl with the shameless color kind of like all over and and it's just, it's completely blended out. I don't, I don't know if I can pull that off. I don't think I can. Let me see if I can do like a tamer version of, oh my God. All right, Michelle, shut up. Let's just, let's just dig right in. So I'm going to take this number 61, the eye fan brush. I'm going to go into shameless. Look at how bright that pink is. And I guess I'll just deepen up the, trend. oh, oh boy. Okay. Deepen up the transition area here. Oh dear. 
and I should have should have knocked off the excess there, but let's see how well this blends. It blends quite nicely. This may turn into an out of my comfort zone video. Not my normal look and definitely not something I would wear out often, but I kind of like this pink. There is really no hiding with bright eyeshadow. You can really kind of like fudge a lot <laughs> with like natural colors. No, nope, no, nope, not with these. All right, uh, let's just stop there with the pink for now. Let me figure out what I'm gonna put actually like on my lids. All right, let me go back to the uh, blender brush. This is the number 62. I'm gonna go into Promiscuous, which is this like silvery shade, and I'm gonna put that all over my lid. We'll see how that works. Okay, and I'm just gonna sweep, wow. Wow, okay. I feel very intergalactic right now. It's really cool when you put the promiscuous over the shameless pink color, you kind of get this like purpley color in there. Oh, it's really fun. And I'm getting just the littlest bit of fallout from that uh, promiscuous shade. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's just like a few little like silver sparkles down there. But I didn't get any from the matte shades, which is really nice. Fun, oh my gosh. Okay, <laughs> I'm liking this a lot more than I thought I would. I think it actually looks really cool. I love layering that silver over the pink. I think it looks so neat, right? right where they meet. Okay, but we have to try that smoky wing. Yeah, this guy and see if I can figure out what, <laughs> I wish you guys were here to help me. All right, we're gonna try it. We're gonna add a little bit of a wing here. Um, I think I'm gonna play off of this purpley color that's created when these two shades meet. And I'm gonna go into, whoa, go into royalty here, this purple shade and wing. You guys, this is really cool. I have no idea, no idea if I'm using this properly, if this is the way Scott Barnes intended it to be used. But if I put the um, like straighter bristles towards the center of my eye, so I have the rounded edge of it towards the outer corner of my eye, and I sweep it and I, and I just roll it up like this, you do get like, you can do like a really easy smoky wing like that. I mean, I hope you guys can see it. it. It's a little bit difficult, that purple I picked. Let me see if I can just keep layering it up. Like he says, I'm just like turning it in my fingers. Oh, huh. okay. Let me add a little bit of this feisty color. This is the matte, like deep, cool tone brown over here. I just wanna use this just a little bit so you guys can see it a little better. I think this eye look is like quickly turning into something completely unwearable. Okay, so we're gonna do some wing action here. I think you can see that better. That's pretty cool, right? My initial mistake was I was bringing this brush out too far. I wasn't letting these rounded bristles kind of do their thing. But if you just turn it, it really just, you don't have to move the brush that far. It really just kind of creates that wing, huh? Wow, well I really can't wait to play around with this a bit more. And you can kind of like blend that out even more if you want an even like smokier kind of wing. Okay, I'm gonna go back to this 61 brush. I'm gonna use whatever's left over on here and just drag it underneath. I don't know if that's enough. Okay, the two remaining brushes are like really, really stiff uh, precision liner brushes. So this is number 60 
And it's like a rounded version of number 59, which is this guy. So I'll use these later on, you know, off camera in my real life. And I will report back to you guys on how I feel about these two brushes. And of course, all of these brushes, I'm going to keep using them. I'm really intrigued by these unique shapes. I'm definitely going to keep using these brushes. Um, so I am going to, you know, kind of finish up the rest of my look here and I will be right back. Editing Michelle here. So I've been editing this video for like three hours and just at the very end, there's randomly no sound. I'm so sorry, but here is a silent clip of me showing you my final look. I really enjoy the palette. I have really enjoyed the brushes so far. I'm sorry there's no sound. If it wasn't Mishmas, I would probably just refilm the whole video, but there you have it. Okay, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.